So, how does one begin to remain optimistic in the face of so much shit hitting the fan, right? There is so much reason for fatalistic doom and gloom these days. It feels like if it bleeds, it leads. It feels like our frontal cortex is being hijacked by this constant stream of anxiety and fear and fatalism and the collapse of civilization just feels imminent and this this is a an existential bummer like no other to feel the weight of the world on your shoulders each of us being sort of intravenously fed social media frenetically parsed social news like like information drowning us in an impossible array of vitriol and negativity it is no wonder why so many of us are are suffering are are agitated it is no wonder why depression and anxiety is running rampant and it is no wonder why it feels like there is no hope in sight but something has to be done about this situation it is an untenable situation and so we need to turn to our to the story that we tell ourselves about ourselves, right? A friend of mine once told me that a personal crisis begins when the story you tell yourself about yourself is no longer convincing. And this is happening collectively. You know, the story society tells itself about itself is no longer convincing. In fact, the, the only narratives that are that are making the, the five o'clock news these days are the ones that, that, that say that the end is near. And so we need, I think, a new story. We need a story about human resilience. We need a story about human possibility. We need a story about human imagination. What Steven Johnson refers to as the adjacent possible. He wrote about this in his book, Where Good Ideas Come From. He said, the adjacent possible is like a shadow from the future that hovers over the present and provides a map of all the ways in which the present can reinvent itself. So what we need is to probe the perimeters of possibility. What we need is to move beyond what Michael Pollan refers to as the been there's and seen that's of the adult mind with our brooding resignation and our nihilism. No, you know, what we need to instead is, is, is craft heroic narratives in which we overcome, in which we sing the songs that orchestrate the universe. We need to exercise exercise what my friend my friend Jun Yoon describes as homeostatic capacity, right? How quickly we can get back to center, you know, how quickly we can recover from all these existential sidelinings, you know, and get back to center, right? Instead of thinking of ourselves as creatures in a do or die world or in a zero-sum game, right? Homeostatic capacity is about recovering from the punches we didn't see coming, right? It's not how many punches you give, as Rocky said, it's how many punches you receive and get back up again. But remember, it's not a zero-sum game. It's not a win or lose game. It's 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 so much more, guys. It's it's what James P. Kars wrote about when he talked about finite and infinite games. He said, finite games are played to win or lose, but infinite games, they're played to keep the game going. How do we keep the game going? How do we come together to address the grand challenges of humanity? How do we extend our hands towards one another, right? How do we incarnate the South African saying, Ubuntu, I am because you are? How do we expand our compassion and empathy, right? Because it is said that empathy rarely extends beyond our line of sight. So how do we increase, expand our line of sight of empathy? How do we grow our hearts? How do we open our hearts, right? How do we make empathy go viral? How do we make kindness go viral? How do we make possibility go viral? How do we make tolerance go viral? How do we make these things be the ethos uh, by which we live? Right? How do we turn our passing illuminations into abiding light, as that wonderful quote talks about? And so that's what is needed. Some kind of scaled, globalized version of the astronaut overview effect. You know, when astronauts go to space, they see the Earth from space. They have a, a, a massive reshifting in who they are from that change in perspective. And then they're more compassionate, empathetic, and they want to make a more meaningful contribution in the world. So we all need to be like the astronauts. We all need to see the big picture. We all need to go into orbit. We all need an ontological awakening. We all need a forceful reckoning with one is. We all need to contemplate space and time on a scale just shy of the infinite. We need to go beyond ourselves, beyond our tribe, beyond our ethnicity, beyond our skin color, beyond our religion, beyond all the bullshit 
and instead see the big picture, the pale blue the pale dot. Light. The only home we've ever known. So, do we have it in us to meet this moment, to rise to the occasion, to drop into our training, to show up, to grow up, and get to work. <laughs>